Hey everybody, how's it going? Um, in this video, I'm going to be talking about some basic electronic repair and troubleshooting arcade games and just testing some stuff out. This is pretty much for the people that they maybe uh, just purchased an old arcade game that's not working and they have to fix it. They have to figure out what's wrong with it, right? Um, luckily, um, the way that they were building things back in the day um, is not complex. It looks complex, like to somebody that's never seen this before, but it really isn't. Um, it's pretty basic. And what we're looking at right now is a Miss Pac-Man board. And the Pac-Man board and the Miss Pac-Man board ultimately are the same thing. They just changed out a, a couple of things and, you know, that was pretty much it. Okay. Now, the, my Miss Pac-Man, um, I've already had to uh, do some work on the monitor on it because a bunch of the capacitors and stuff went out on it. Um, so, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about if you have an old arcade game and it's not working, you know, or you're having problems with certain aspects of it, what should you be looking for? Like for, you know, the repair. What are you supposed to be looking for? And how do you test some of these things? Um, the very first thing is, is this, this is pretty much the extent of the game, what you're looking at right here. Beyond all this, it's just going to be a bunch of cables, a power supply, and the monitor that is inside there, which is usually a CRT monitor. And um, I have to say it just because it's kind of like, if not, it's a liability thing, and that is electricity can fucking kill you. Right, so before you start fooling around with any of this stuff, make sure it's all unplugged. Make sure that um, if you have any large capacitors or something in, inside there, you discharge them. Don't fool around with the picture tube unless you know how to discharge it and all that other stuff and you know how to be safe. And I'll probably do a video on how to do that. So that way, just in case you do decide to take some of this stuff apart and try it yourself, you don't end up uh, basically acting, it doesn't act like a defibrillator and stop your heart because there's a lot of voltage that that picture tube ends up holding. Um, so be safe, electricity can kill you. But you want to look for the most simplest solutions first, right? What is the most likely thing to go bad, right? And with arcade games, um, you know, a lot of these are old. Th these are old. You know, this stuff basically came out in uh, 1980, 81, 82, things like that were a lot of these old games that are considered classics. And these parts go bad as time uh, goes by, especially capacitors. Capacitors are the number one thing that you're probably going to end up having to replace. Sometimes you'll have to replace some memory and stuff, but um, or maybe like a ROM chip or something, but those things, not as much, right? Um, so let's go ahead and look at this board, there's already a few things I've had to order on this because I know that they're bad. Um, but the first thing that you want to check is all of your connections, like your ribbon connections, right? Um, anywhere that you have wires plugging into other wires, look at all of them. Make sure that they're, they have good connections. Take them apart, look to see if the inside of them are corroded, right? Look for the easiest solution first. L see if there was a wire or something that came loose. So here's an example of some of the loose connections that you might end up having, right? <clears throat> On something like this. You can pop these out, you look inside here, make sure that they're clean, make sure that they're sticking out far enough that they can grab this, make sure that these are all clean and they're grabbing. You check the wires, make sure that they're connected inside here. None of them are loose, none of them are broken, right? Um, sometimes they get bent and frayed and come loose. And even though they'll still be inside there, they're actually not connected. So you, you just kind of look at all of these on both sides. And then if it all checks out, you're good to go. You can also um, make sure that these things, you're, you're getting good connection by basically connecting these two, putting one of your leads from your multimeter here, one here, and to test continuity to make sure that you're getting it from here to here right that way you know there's good connection if you don't get it that means that you know one of the wires is not it's making it's not making good connection so you can do that with these types of guys i actually have to rebuild this door um, because uh, somebody ended up uh, 
or people tried breaking in to steal the quarters out of it and they damaged the door so I have to kind of rebuild this door and make it look nice again um, and whatnot because they really fucked it up um, but anyway that's how you can check a lot of these connections you're gonna see these types of connections you know for here obviously to the coin door it's all loose um, to the coin door you're gonna see it for the joystick um, you're gonna see maybe a couple in the back for power as well all of these things you can test with the power off right to make sure that you've got the continuity that you need um, between these these wires just to make sure that everything's fine like here's another one that you can test um, so that's basically how you end up doing that always simple solution first okay after that you need to also make sure that your power supply is correct it's it's good it's clean and I'll show you how to do that too because if your power is not correct right dirty power incorrect power not only can it damage a lot of this stuff but the game's not going to act correctly so you have to that's the second thing power supply okay so here we are at the Miss Pac-Man machine I have it plugged in we don't have the board in remember because that's over there on the table that I'm working on but I've, I've got the power on and um, you gotta have the power on in order to check the um, power right um, that you you don't you know you can keep the power off to check the fuses and all that other stuff like that but we have to make sure that we're getting the proper power now basically what we're looking at right here let me kind of now this all uh, power supplies are not the same but you're gonna see common things um, this is the main fuses coming from the wall right so this is a main thing coming from the wall this is um, this little guy right here that you see me shine the light on. This is an, uh, a filter, right? This is just to kind of help kind of keep the uh, signals from kind of messing up things. Then it goes into our main power transformer. And over here is a transformer for our monitor, right? So this is where you'd be looking, if, you, if you're having monitor power problems, you would look at this guy, right? So we're gonna be testing this, this one right here. AC voltage coming in should be about 110, 120, somewhere in that area. And over here it should be coming out. We should be seeing things like 7 volts and 12 volts and stuff. And these are the fuses that go to the board that basically go to the other components and stuff like that after it's been reduced. So <clears throat> how are we going to test this? Well, this is AC. This has not gone through a rectifier yet. And because of that, you need to set your multimeter up uh, to read AC current. Do it at about 200. Don't go low just in case that there's an error with this. There's a problem. It doesn't mess up your meter, right? So go about 200 on the settings and do not touch anything inside here with your hands while this power is on, right? You got to be very, very careful. Remember, electricity kills. Um, now, I know that there's power coming from the wall. I mean, I can see the light up there in the Pac Man, I can hear the monitor on, I, all this other stuff. Um, but if there wasn't, first thing I would check would be these fuses right here. You do that with the power off, right? You take these fuses out and you check them with the power off. If they're good, okay, from there you need to start seeing where the power is stopping. Where, you know, the filter can go bad, but more than likely it's not going to. It's going to be a fuse, and then after the fuse it could be a broken or loose wire, and then transformers don't go bad that often, right? Um, but if it does go bad, you'll know because of the way we're going to test it. So let me, I, this, I'm using a flashlight here. I'm going to have to turn this off so you can see, uh, so I can see what I'm doing here. Okay, I had to move the camera and get over where I can actually see what's going on here. So I have to find the ground. I have to find the zero volts, basically, that's coming out of the transformer. And on this side of it, um, at this angle I'm at, I can read it and I can see what it's written. It says that this is 7 volts, this doesn't have a marking, that says 7 volts, and then where these green wires are, that says 0 volts. That's, that's my ground. So the, the, I have to put one of the leads there. This is going to be an AC current, so um, it doesn't really make a difference which one I put on here because I'm going to get the, 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 uh, the same reading because it's an AC current. But I'm going to put my black one on there, and then I'm going, to, I'm going to touch each one of these and make sure that I'm getting my 7 volts, I'm getting my 12 volts and stuff like that that's supposed to be coming out of there. 
over here, I'm also going to be holding that ground still and testing at the outside of these fuses. Um, that will also tell me that we have good wiring and the fuses are still good. Okay, so let's go ahead and take care of this. Okay, so right here, I'm getting my 12 volts. It's about 12 and a half volts. That's fine. Right here, I'm getting my seven like I'm supposed to. Okay, now I can test all those, <clears throat> but I can also come over here and test these guys. Right here, I'm getting my 12 volts. This also tells me the fuse is good. I'm getting 12 volts. I'm getting seven volts. I'm getting about five and a half volts. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to double check that that uh, five and a half volts and make sure that that's what it's supposed to be is five volts. I, I think it is, but um, I'm going to double check that going through the manual just to make sure that that is correct. You need your manual, you need your schematics, so that way you know what this is supposed to be pumping out. This is all AC current, right? This has not been rectified yet. On the Miss Pac-Man machine, it gets rectified on the main board. Those two large capacitors and plus those heavy diodes that I tested earlier, that's part of that, that rectifying circuit, okay? So after this was all put back together and the board was back in, I could actually test the DC on the board in, the, in those areas, okay? The owner's manual will tell you generally where you can test and what kind of voltages you should be getting. But just remember, <clears throat> power, if you don't have power, your game's not gonna work, all right? And most often it's gonna be a blown fuse or something. But if you're getting strange numbers coming out of that transformer, nothing's gonna work and you'll have to replace the transformer. Good thing is the transformers don't go bad that often. Okay, but this is your, that's your main transformer that has the step down. That's your isolation transformer that goes to your monitor. Okay, so if you're having monitor problems and monitor power problems, boom, it's going to be that guy. Okay, same thing. Look at what is supposed to be um, coming out of that in your schematics, you know, to test it. Make sure everything's good. Okay. So you do your, the first thing, boom, wires, ribbon cables, loose connections, most obvious, right? This is just done by visual inspection. You don't need any special tools for that. Um, after that, you start checking things like power supply. Make sure that the, your, the, the game is getting the power that it needs. Like I said, I'll show you how to do that. After that, as long as that's working, then you can start going into the meat of this stuff. And the very first thing that you want to do, we'll use this as an example right here. And this one, the ribbon cable, because as time goes by, these guys get old and brittle. And some of these pins actually ended up kind of just breaking off, coming loose. So I had to order a new ribbon cable. This is causing, I guarantee, the majority of the problem right here. And that's on its way, okay? But this would be considered a loose connection. You know, $5 fix, not a big deal. But let's say that this is fine, and you have to start looking at your boards. As time goes by, let me see if I can, it doesn't show up on this one. Let me, let me look, let me show you on this one. As time goes by, okay, all of these shiny little things are what they call traces, right? They're ultimately just like little wires, right? Just think of it as little wires that basically run from one component to another, okay? But as time goes by, you see how this is bubbling? up in this area, it kind of starts coming loose. And also, due to excessive heat and things like that, that can happen. So what you want to do is do a visual inspection on the board. And the visual inspection, you're going to be checking, you're going to be looking at all the traces, right? You're going to be looking at these. Are they broken anywhere, right? You're going to be looking for bad solder joints, right? You, as time goes by, sometimes these joints, uh, these joints and stuff, will end up actually kind of like popping away from the actual board, uh, away from the trace. And if you see anything like that, you can generally just use a little bit of sandpaper or something on the trace if it's broken and just put a little bit of solder there. Or you can even do a jumper wire, whatever it takes in order to kind of put that trace back. Now, I've already inspected this top and bottom, okay, because you'll see there's traces on this side and there's traces on this side. And it takes a while, right? This is something that takes a while and you have to look really, really close. So check those 
if all the traces work out, everything looks like the solder joints are good. With the solder joints is going to be another major thing that you're going to find is a, is a big problem with old electronics. And you have to look really, really close. Like, let me, well, let's, let's look at these because they're large, okay? But like these guys right here, you have to look real, real close and see if you can see a crack. Because a lot of times you'll see like a little crack or something where this is coming up. Um, or like this actually looks a, like it could be soldered in better. This one right here, I don't know if you can see that. This looks like, like it has a bad solder joint, so this needs to be hit. You can also tell just by the discoloration here, we have excessive heat, right? That could create a problem. Excessive heat damages parts. So, you know, you look at things like this, retouch them up with solder, which I'm going to end up doing right now for that one since I see it while we're talking here, okay? The traces, they check out. All of the jo solder joints check out. Um, the next thing that you would basically want to do, um, was it this one? Yeah. Um, okay. The next thing that you'd want to do um, is visual inspection of the actual parts. Um, right here where there's the connections on this, clean this, right? These get old and dirty. Uh, they start getting built up on both sides. The traces between here and there, these can actually break off too. And they'll be so small that you might not even be able to see it unless you look incredibly close or even with a magnifying glass. This is the easy stuff first, right? The easy stuff. And the way that you can clean these is actually with just a, a pencil eraser. Um, or if you don't have a pencil eraser, which I don't know why you wouldn't. But if you don't, you can use really, really fine sandpaper when I say really fine we're talking like 2000 grit or you can even use things like a like a like a uh, like a Brillo pad like steel wool to gently clean that stuff off but you don't want to damage any of the traces like you you, you want to do it gently right so we see that there's excessive heat right here okay so we turn it over and we're looking at we're looking at this point now for um, visual damage on components and the visual damage you'll notice because like th these diodes are probably okay because these things are built to handle a lot of heat and stuff and that's probably just it's normal wear and tear so I can test these just to make sure but I, I, I'm pretty positive they're okay but you end up looking at stuff you, you you look at the side of any of your ICs like any of your chips see if they're corroded see if they, they have jumpers uh, like in other words when I say jumpers like there's a piece of wire or something or solder that's touching from one pin to another pin, right? Look for little things like that. Look for discoloration. Look to see if any of these pins are actually broken from the IC. You're looking for things like that. You're looking for things like capacitors, like, like this guy, which is a ceramic capacitor, and here's an electrolytic. And you're looking at these guys to see if there's any damage to these, if this is cracked or broken or something along those lines, something visual. You're looking at these guys to see if they're bulged or anything's leaking out of them. You're looking at diodes, just like these little guys that are, well, you can't really see that, hang on. Just like these little guys right here. And I know that these are diodes just because of the way they look. And I know that these are diodes because it says D8 and D7. And on these boards, they'll usually tell you, they'll kind of give you a hint on what's supposed to go there right like on a capacitor you might see something like right here where it says c10 right so it's telling you it's a capacitor a d would be like for diode so you're looking at things like that you're looking at transistors that look like they've heated up and burned up you're doing the visual inspection and a lot of times what's wrong with it? it's going to just jump out at you right a lot of times just by looking at things like that um, and if you do need to replace something like a transistor or a diode or something along those lines, they don't always have a mark. The transistors will usually have a mark somewhere. Like you'll be able to see something and you can type that in to Google as the part and it'll show up. It'll tell you what it is and how much it costs. Usually 75 cents or something. But when it comes to things like trans, uh, when it comes to things like resistors and diodes and stuff like that, the resistors will have the color code and that tells you exactly what it is. 
And um, you know, you can find that on Google too as what the resistor color code is. Um, for the diodes and things, sometimes you can see something on them and it tells you what the part is, but sometimes they're very small and you can't. So you need schematics. And you can get the schem you can download the schematics for the particular board for the game that you're looking at. Wherever it says like D7 or D8 or D6, you look on the schematics, it'll sit there and say D6 and it'll tell you exactly what it is. You can order that part, right? Um, if you have the game, the owner's manual, a lot of times it's already in there. But you can usually download these things. Uh, Mike'sArcade.com, I think, has got a lot of that stuff inside there that you can download. But here's, a, here's a, an example. Let me zoom in so you can kind of see this of what I'm talking about, about discoloration. Do you see how dark that is on these, on these pieces compared to like this? Right, that's bright, that isn't. This could be a problem. So you could pop out the, want these ICs, clean them up, put them back in, make sure everything has got good connection. Because it, just one of these little pins not getting the proper um, connectivity is gonna end up causing strange behavior in the game. Like it might work sometimes and then all of a sudden something weird happens and you're like, why is this happening? Okay. Could be a bad ROM, could be a bad memory, right? It could be a lot of things, but some, just bad connections in and of themselves could cause that. So, and I know a lot of the stuff I'm saying right now just seems to be common sense and everything, but you always start with the easiest solution first and then you start looking at the tough stuff. Okay. As far as resistors go, resistors, usually don't go out okay but if they do go out it's kind of obvious because they're going to end up being burnt or something like that and when a resistor goes out it usually doesn't damage the board simply because it it creates more resistance or what it does is it's just it opens so no current goes through at all right so that's actually a good thing okay um, but resistors typically don't go out um, so and they last for a really long time and everything so this is something that you might not really have to look at that's one of the last things that you would look at the things that you're going to be focusing on are going to be diodes transistors capacitors and then after that you're going to start looking at your ROM okay you're going to you're going to be looking at your memory you're going to be looking at things like this okay um, or even a processor this has got um, a Z80 in it which is when they first came out, this was, this was some badass shit when that came out, man. Nowadays, it's nothing. You can get a new one of those for $2. I think it's like 2 megahertz or something, the speed of that processor. It's like really slow. Okay, so how do you test these guys, right? How are you going to test them? There's, you're going to need a few things. Just get a multimeter, a standard multimeter. It doesn't have to be fancy. The, you know, if you spend a lot on one, this one I didn't. I think I spent $40 on this. Um, but if you get a really, really good one, the readings are going to be more accurate, you know. But most people, unless they're actually in the field of electronics, is not going to spend $200 on a fluke. They're going to buy something like this. And as long as it's got a certain level of tolerance that is acceptable, it, it's fine, right? And you're going to need this, a capacitance meter. These are pretty cheap. You can get these for like 30 bucks, 40 bucks, right? And the important thing to, to know on these guys, though, is if you are going to be using one, because some d digital multimeters have a capacitance test. The, the problem is, is they don't go very high in the farads, right? And you know, it might only go up to like 20 or 40 microfarads, and that's not enough. Um, if, you, if you look at this right here, this is you know, 10,000 microfarads. You wouldn't be able to test it, right? And, then, and this is an important capacitor you have to check. So get something like this, that basically that's all it does is just test capacitance and it'll definitely be able to take you up to those areas that you need to go to. Um, if you have really fancy equipment, you won't need to really even be watching this video and you'll know how to test the stuff if it's still in the board, um, you know, with oscilloscopes and things like that. But let's just assume you don't have any of those things and you just have the basic tools. How do you test them? You got to take them out of the board. Right? You can't really test certain things within the board and get an accurate reading or number. Okay? So how do you do that? Well, you get, your, you get your soldering iron and you also get your little solder sucker. Hang on for a second. And 
you go through and let's say for instance I want to test this capacitor right here okay now I can try I can try to test this guy this says that it's 470 okay um, I can try to test this guy let's see what happens um, in the board see how it's just it's just being crazy and that's because the power is going all through this board and it might be hitting other capacitors and doing other things and it's going to give me false readings I gotta take this out of here and this is how you do pretty much all of this so you turn it over make sure that um, when you're looking at things like this anytime you take something out make sure you pay attention to the direction that it goes in okay because some of these things like resistors doesn't matter really what direction they go in but things like transistors absolutely diodes absolutely electric uh, electrolytic capacitors absolutely they have to go in the, the, the right direction and you're gonna find that they're nice enough a lot of times to show you uh, let's see right here what the positive side is right and what the negative side is they'll have some marking okay they'll to show you what it is sometimes it's just a dot right but this is a good thing this is pointing positive this way and that is a little confusing because generally electrolytics the line shows the negative right so if you're not paying attention you say oh this is the negative side blah blah, blah you can screw things up so this is pointing positive over here we can see that it's positive this is also C3 we turn this thing over and now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking for the two solder joints which are here and here okay so let's go ahead and get my solder sucker out and we're going to be uh, is it right there yeah we're going to be heating this up and then popping it out to test it Okay, so let's turn this over. See if there's anything, ah, okay. You don't want to be rough with these things, right? This right here, there's some solder up on this side. Okay, so we have to get rid of this too. So we have the capacitor out now, okay? And like I said, these capacitors, as time goes by, they generally go bad. Um, electrolytics, I've always thought were really cool capacitors, but they suck, right? They, they suck. They don't, they don't last very long. Um, so this guy is rated at 16 volts at 470 microfarads. And if this is bad and we have to replace it, you can go up in the voltage, but the amount of farads has to stay the same. So in other words, let's say I go to the local ele electronics place, because you don't have to order those kits and stuff like that. You can go to places locally, electronic supply places, and they have a lot of this stuff in stock. Capacitor does not have to even look like this, just as long as it's an electrolytic and as long as it's got the same values, you can use it, right? So don't get stuck in a thing, it has to look the same. Right, because these are old. This is old technology. New ones, a lot of times, are often much smaller. So 16 volts um, at 470 microfarads. So what we could do is, let's say we go to the local supply place and they don't have any at 16 470, but they have something that might be at uh, 60 volts at 470. You can use that, and it'll be just fine. It just means it has a higher uh, voltage rating. It can just handle more, more voltage. But the 470 microfarads has to be the same. And you cannot go lower than 16, but you can go higher. Even if it said 1,000 volts, 470, you could use that too, right? Um, but generally, they're going to have stuff like this because this is a common, this is a common uh, value. So we're going to go ahead and test this. We're going to put the positive on the positive, And we're going to do the negative on the negative. And let's see what kind of reading we get. That's kind of high. For 470, this is high, right? That's more than what it should be. That's way more than it should be. I'm going to replace this, okay? That's way more than it should be. Usually, you'll see them lose capacitance, okay? But sometimes they'll go up too. But that is just too, that's just too high. Um, let me... 
move this. Yeah, that's just that's just too high. This gets this is going to get replaced. Okay, um, and also when you're taking things apart like this, it's good to take pictures or it's good to film. So that way, if you have a whole bunch of parts out and you say, "Oh my God, where do they go?" You have a record of where everything went. Okay, but this guy gets replaced, and what I'm going to do, and I've already ordered all the parts for uh, for, for these guys. You'll see right here, this is where the capacitor went, right? It's got the positive. It also shows the sign of a capacitor. It tells you it's C3, so as long as you have the schematics, you'll know exactly which one you're supposed to get to. But this one goes there. And what you can do at this point is you can leave this here and just put a piece of scotch tape or something as well. I'm not going to worry about that because I know where it goes. There's only so many on here. And they're all the same value. Right, so this, this, because this one and this one are the, the same ones, right here. So I'm going to take this guy out now, and we're going to test this one. When you're doing monitors, okay, because the cap kit for a monitor is probably the most common thing you're going to end up having to do, right? Because the monitors go bad, and it makes it look like the game itself is all messed up. But it's really just, uh, it's just, it's just a bad, you know, capacitors in the monitor. Um, Online you can buy a lot of these things, they'll call them cap kits, where they sell you all of the capacitors that you need uh, to fix that particular brand of monitor. And that's fine and dandy and it's somewhat convenient, but you don't need that. You can just take, you can take it apart and test these guys and then just go buy what you need to buy at your local electronic supply place. If you, if you don't have electronic supply place, then obviously you're going to end up having to uh, order this stuff online. So I'm going to do the same thing. I, like once again, I have it's kind of hard for me to do this because I'm leaning. So uh, give me a second, guys. Here is another way that you can do this. You can test, and it also tell it also makes it easier for you to re know which ones you have to replace or uh, just make it where uh, you don't have to desolder as much. Just take one side out, right, and leave the other side in. And let's go ahead and test this. And this has got the same value as the other one. And this has given me high readings as well. This is, yeah, this, this has given me high readings too. And, um, that should be replaced in my opinion. So I'm going to be taking this one out as well because that's just a little too high. Um, if it says 470, now there's, there's tolerances, right? You know, generally 10% is about as much as you want to go. Um, but depending on the circuit, you can play around with these numbers a little bit more. But when you're dealing with like a, when you're dealing with like a, a PCB board, you want these things to be as accurate as possible. Right, you 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 need you need those tolerances to even be tighter. And when you buy the and when you buy uh, new parts, buy quality parts. Don't buy crap because the craps will the crap ones they won't last as long and their tolerances are much worse. So let's come up here and test another one. And basically, when you're when you're Rebuilding and troubleshooting. This is basically what you're doing. You're going through and you're testing all these things. You're going, you test you test the electronics like the uh, any type of transistor that you might find. You know you got to do the base emitter and collector. And, and these guys, a lot of times, you have to remove too. You know you take them out and you test them. Now this is a basic transistor right here. This is pretty old school. And you have a base emitter and a collector. Now I have seen some transistors. Um, that are older that do not have the same for the sake of argument we'll say that this is the base the middle is the like collector and then the far right is the emitter we'll just say that on this but and I've seen some though that are not in the same configuration so just because it looks the same and it's in the right thing and you put it inside there does not mean that it's actually correct you have to make sure that the base emitter and collector is lined up the correct the correct leads um, because uh, when it goes back on the board because if not it's going to damage stuff right and so you got to make sure of that if you're going to replace it, just make sure that they're the same 
and you, you'll know by the manufacturer or how you test it. Sometimes the board will actually tell you what the base and the emitter and the collector is. So I have this set on diode setting and a transistor ultimately is just like a uh, two diodes, right? So what you want to do, there's two types, there's PNP and then there's NPN, negative, positive, negative or positive, negative, positive, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to test this. We're going to say that this is positive, negative, positive. We're going to test it this way. So I'm going to put my negative lead here and I'm going to put my positive here. I'm not getting a reading. I'm going to come on this side. I'm not getting a reading. Okay, so let me flip these. So we know that it's not an NP, uh, we know that it's not a PNP. So from here, ah, I'm getting a reading. Okay, come over here and I'm getting the same reading. Right? Test these two. I should not get a reading. There we go. This is a good transistor. But this also tells us that this is an NPN. NPN because it's negative, positive, negative. If it was a PNP, it would be the exact opposite. Okay, That's how you test it. If you end up getting readings other than that, in other words, no matter what I, no, like if I'm here and here and I'm getting a reading and I get a reading here and I flip it and I'm getting readings still, either I'm not touching the, the correct lead or the transistor is bad. Okay? So anyway guys, that's how you test a transistor, an easy way. Resistors are pretty much a no-brainer, okay? They're really easy to, to test. If you don't have the schematics, you can actually look at the color code on these. And by looking at these color codes, it's going to tell you exactly what the resistor is, what its value is. And you can order appropriately if you don't have the schematics. Same thing, you end up popping one side out or both sides out. Then you take your multimeter, okay? This is, I mean, it's, it's, this is probably one of the easiest things to test. And afterwards, same thing. You hook it on the resistance on the ohm scale and you would sit there and you would throw these on there. Look at the reading. Make sure that it's correct, okay? Generally, you don't have to worry about replacing resistors. And when a resistor goes bad, you all know most of the time you're going to know because it's going to look burnt up or something. It's, it's not going to look right. Every now and then they go bad and it, they look okay, but most of the time it's really obvious that they burnt up or something. And um, if it burns up, you might not be able to look at that color code anymore, right? Because it's just going to be burnt up. So you need the schematics. I can't keep uh, emphasizing that enough. You need the schematics um, just to be safe. On a lot of things you don't. Right, but on some of these things, you might need it. Um, when you are taking chips out, okay, let me let me kind of show you here. You got to be real careful about these chips, and <clears throat> use a, a, a fine-tipped screwdriver. And you want to come up underneath the side, gently put it in there, and use just a little bit of pressure. See, this one is really tight. Um, they have chip pullers. In fact, I, I can't even get in there. Let me find a different one that that is going to be easier for me to show you because this screwdriver's got too fat of a handle. So let's do let's do one of these guys right here, okay? But you you kind of get inside there, and then you you gently push, gently push, and you work that screwdriver up and under and be really careful with it. And then after you kind of have that, you gently pull out, okay? And then from here, you can go ahead and look at all these. I've already cleaned these guys. I did that yesterday. You clean these guys up, you look at them, make sure that all the pins are intact, everything looks nice, all, everything inside here looks good, no loose connections, and then you gently put the guy back inside there, okay? So that's, that's when you're cleaning your chips and you're looking at your chips. Um, a lot of people online, when you start asking questions about how do you fix this or how do you fix that, you're going to get some bad advice. They're, they're, going, to, they're going to tell you to like replace things that you don't necessarily need to replace just because it's, it's kind of overkill, right? Um, we push that back in there gently. You'll also notice that with these chips, they have like a little, like a notch on these things, and these notches are in line with the notches of the connector underneath it. 
we'll use this as an example. Let me pull this up. We have a notch here. We have a notch on this side, right? Well, we have one over here. No, it just looks like that. But we have a notch here. That tells us that when we look at this guy, see how that notch? That notch lines up with this notch, okay? And I'm replacing this ROM. Some, I hate that, the fact that people speed it up and they, I like the original stuff. And everything needs to be lined up perfectly when it goes back on. You know, work slow, work accurately. Don't damage it more than it needs to get damaged. So that's how you check your capacitors. Like I said, I'm going to go through and test the rest of these capacitors. So in my monitor, these are the ones that were good. These are the ones that are bad. When looking at capacitors, look for leaks and the tops. See if they've been bulging or they're broken in any way. It's a dead giveaway that they're bad. Um, the way you check diodes. Well, diodes are, are um, basically little guys that allow current to go one direction but not the other. They have some that when the voltage gets to a certain point, it will start going the other direction. But um, ultimately, it's just a little device that allows it in one direction and not the other. So <clears throat> we'll pop out, we'll pop out one of these um, big diodes right here that have been heated up. I'm sure they're fine, but we'll, we'll test those. And um, I'm going to have one side out and leave the other side in. And then uh, let me do that and then I'll turn the camera back on. Okay, so I've got that loosened and what we do is um, get your multimeter out, but da -da -dum, turn the guy on, put it on the diode testing mode, and the diode testing mode is the guy that's got the little arrow right there. And like I said, this allows current to go in one direction and not the other. So when I put my, when I put my meter, uh, my, my leads here onto the diode on each side of the diode, okay, I get a reading this direction, but when I flip them, I shouldn't get the same reading. See how I don't get a reading? That means that this one should be just fine. Current goes through this way. Current does not go through this way. And that's how you test diodes. If you get a current going through both sides, it's probably bad, right? But like I said, there's also some special types of diodes that will, you, that will allow a small amount of voltage to go the other direction. So before you assume that it's bad, make sure that it's, it's um, it's going through it's 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 not doing what it's it's doing it's not doing what it's supposed to do right because there's some weird and there's some things that look like diodes and they're not there's some things that look like resistors and they're not there's some things that look like capacitors but they're not but on the, a lot of these old things generally what you see is what you get and if you see current go through it one way and not the other you're good but replacing the diode same thing make sure it goes in the proper direction and they'll have, let's see, does this guy, yeah, this guy has it. How nice of them. It's almost foolproof, right? Underneath, underneath this, they even got the marking that shows you the direction that it's supposed to go. And diodes will usually have some type of line that kind of also tells you. So I can push this guy back in where it belongs and I can solder it up. So, um, that's pretty much some of, just the, some of the basics. Um, that will get you really, really far on repairing the majority of these cabinets. I mean, I can, uh, the next time I, I get another game that I have to redo the monitor, I'll show you how to do the monitor. Uh, but uh, as far as, as far as the monitor, you test it pretty much the exact same way as you would do the PCB board, looking for bad traces, looking for damaged, um, you know, looking for damaged wiring, damaged components. You know, the capacitors are the number one thing that goes out on them the number one thing but before you start messing with the monitor you have to be able to discharge the picture tube <coughs> and there's a specific way that you do it that it makes it safe right but like I've said before you're messing around with electronics you can die right be careful and uh, any you know the only time that you should be testing anything with the power on is when you're testing the actual power right any everything else the power should be off Right, don't be fooling around with the stuff while there's juice going through it. But anyway, guys, um, this is the first lesson on these repairs, and this is the same type of stuff that you can do with almost any type of old electronics. Like it doesn't matter what it is, old radios, old amplifiers, um, old TV sets. It, it doesn't make a difference because it's pretty much all the same. 
the newer things, of course, they're built a lot differently, and the way that they 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 do surface mount and stuff like that, and the way that they the components are, it's much much harder, if not impossible, to fix or repair with standard electronic tools. But these old guys, yeah, it's very doable. It's easy, and all it takes is just a little bit of uh, uh, patience, a little bit of thinking, a couple of basic tools, and. Uh, that's it, guys. That's it. So, anyway, until next time, talk to you later.